Hopefully by now, you've received enough responses. Enough responses would be between 20 and 25. And if you have anything more than that, be very happy. I would not stop collecting until it's time for me to continue with the rest of my phase two. So something like 32 is fantastic, but try not to have below 20. So the first step is to check your name. Your name has to be something meaningful. So the title of your form is perfect. I'm using a form from one of the students from last year. As soon as you click on the untitled form, it will actually carry over the title to that same place. So this is perfect. Now we can print the questionnaire so that your teacher can mark it and you need to save it in your phase two questionnaire folder. So we're gonna go more, print, and this should be about between two to four, five pages or so, where you can actually see what it looks like when someone needs to fill it in. Printer needs to be save as PDF or Microsoft print to PDF. You can see if one of them looks better than the other, but they should be about the same. And then you can say print. Then go and save it in the right place. Use the same name as the title of your form if it didn't carry over automatically. Now we switch to the responses tab. On the responses tab, the first thing we do is we close the form so that people don't continue filling it in unnecessarily. So we switch off accepting responses and if you want, you can put a nicer message in here, but that doesn't matter. Next, we're actually going to print the responses from the respondents and also save it as a PDF as proof that the different people filled it in. So you click on the three dots over here on the responses tab at the bottom next to the little green icon for create a spreadsheet. So it's not the same as the one at the top. And now you're going to say print all responses. And this you'll see are way more pages because it's actually from all the different respondents. So this one is 128 sheets of paper. So be very careful that you actually don't print it on physical paper. Choose your printer and go print. And now you can actually say something like individual responses or whatever you want to call it. Now we're done with the form. We need to create our spreadsheet now where all this data from the form is actually drawn into a spreadsheet format. So there's a button that helps us do this. We can just click on the create spreadsheet button, this green one over here. And we can say create a new spreadsheet, say create. And this one will also be in your Google Drive. Now we're going to download this spreadsheet and save it under the questionnaire responses because we're going to create two copies, one for spreadsheet and one for database. But we first need to clean some things up. So file, download as a Microsoft Excel file. Then go and save it in the correct place. And I'd say in the questionnaire folder is still the right place because we are working with the raw responses now. And now you can open your file. Right, now we need to clean up our data a little bit. So there are two things we need to do. The first thing is if you have enough responses, so what I'm talking about enough is a little bit more than 25, you can actually delete the duplicates. So for example here, this one looks like a duplicate because it's the same, it's exactly the same answers all the way through, okay? So if I have too many of these, it's actually going to skew my results when I analyze this. So it's better to delete these duplicates. The way you do that is you select everything. So you can stand anywhere in your data and you say control A so that it selects the data, but not the whole sheet. And you can go to the data tab and choose remove duplicates. Now remove duplicates compares different columns. In this instance, all the columns need to be the same, except the timestamp, because it was someone who filled it in twice and thought the first one didn't work. So I'm going to remove the timestamp column 
and all the rest, the whole column needs to be precisely the same and then only it will be removed. Okay, and it actually found four duplicates, so I have 28 records remaining. Next up, we need to clean our data and check if there were anywhere we, we didn't actually apply response validation where we needed to. So this would be, for example, in currency fields, where I asked them how much they had to spend on something and they actually put in the R manually. So you'll see in this instance, the student fixed it quite quickly because she realized it was going to be a problem, but the first record still had this problem. So you need to go in and delete these problems and fix them. Also, any joke kind of records where people filled in something ridiculous like 1 million, where everybody else just filled in 100 rand. In that instance, you can decide what you want to do. If you want to guess what they, their answer would be, if you actually know that person, or if you just want to delete their answer and change it to zero. So have a look through your things. Um, other problem data is usually things like where you ask them the amount of data they spend. Um, you might have asked for them to specify it in gigabytes and they actually provided an amount in megabytes. Um, or they actually wrote the GB at the end or the MB at the end. So you need to clean up your data so that you have pure numerical data where you can actually use this for calculations. We need to decide what we're going to use in Excel and what we're going to do in Access. If you were going for this mark where they actually asked that we have a table in the database that was not a direct import from the spreadsheet. So if you're someone who actually asked more than five questions, then this is applicable to you. So what you need to do for this is you need to see which of the columns you are planning to use in Excel and which of the columns you're planning to use in Access. So I don't want you to cut anything yet. I just want you to move it so that the Excel columns are first and the Access columns are second. So Excel will in general need more numerical data and you need to decide what kind of data would be more suitable for Access. We actually discussed that quite intensively in the questionnaire video. So once you've decided that you need specific data for your Excel, you can move these columns. So say, for example, I wanted this column for Excel. I'm going to move it to the start. I'm going to use the gender and the age, but I'm not going to use the occupation. So I'm going to move that more towards the end. Now you can cut and paste, but a faster way is actually to hold in shift while you have your four headed arrow. So you select the whole column with the black arrow pointing downwards by clicking on the column letter. And then if you click and drag, you'll see it's trying to replace it. But the moment you press shift on your keyboard, you'll see it's inserting this. So I'm just going to insert it after the age column. And then I'm going to do the same with occupation and just move it the other direction. So once you're done moving them in general in two directions, now they don't have to be perfect, but try to have it roughly more that the Excel is on the left hand side and the axis is more on the right hand side. We're going to make a duplicate of this spreadsheet in two places. So you're going to save this. Now, please pay attention here. This is one step where everybody gets lost. So you're first going to save the raw responses where we cleaned up the data. Close. Now we're going into questionnaire. We're going to copy this spreadsheet and we're going to make a paste. We're going to paste it in the database, right click, paste, because this is what we're going to import into the database. You can rename it that if you want to, importing data, because we're not going to import everything, but we'll decide later what we're going to import. 
and we're going to go to the spreadsheet and we're also going to right click paste it here. Okay, so that we don't work on the same spreadsheet for all of these different programs because you can't import a spreadsheet when it has different functions and formulas and graphs on different pages. You can't import that into Access. So it's very important that you actually work on a separate spreadsheet from the one that you're planning on importing into Access. Right, so we have our separate spreadsheet here. And now let's have a look at what we've done so far. Your questionnaire should be done. We have our 25 questionnaires. You've got data that's suitable to a spreadsheet, excluding irrelevant biographical data. And I just want to mention here, the one thing that I would specifically say that's not suitable to a spreadsheet would be things like a free form text where people could fill in anything they wanted. If you want to keep that and you're actually going to analyze it, I would take that to the database. That's really not suitable for a spreadsheet. Okay. And we've done our database. We, we haven't really done this so far, but we're planning this. So we've got our separate suitable data for that. That has to be five fields. So just keep that in mind. And hopefully we have 20 records for that so long. Right.